That monster hurricane, the strongest ever on record in the Atlantic Ocean, slamming into the Caribbean already, turning deadly, ravaging islands. And I want to get back to that video. Just listen to the sound as it slams St. Martin. An extremely powerful storm, so many islands getting hammered, many Americans who could not get out in time trying to ride out this hurricane. This satellite image tonight shows the eye of this Category 5 storm fully formed there. At this hour, Irma still tracking right toward Florida, but there are several other states now in the possible path. And I want to show you this tonight. This image coming in, that's the eye again, but in the middle there, that is the island of Barbuda. Authorities there late this afternoon reporting at least 90% of the buildings on that island could be gone now. ABC's Lindsay Janice is in the middle of it all. She leads us off tonight. Tonight, Hurricane Irma tearing through the Caribbean, claiming at least three lives with ferocious 185 mile an hour winds. Irma pummeling the U.S. Virgin Islands, home to more than 90,000 U.S. citizens. It is really ripping right now. In St. Martin, the government says 95% of the island is destroyed. Buildings shredded, even the airport damaged. A dangerous wave sweeping this person right off their feet. We tried to like stop the water, but I mean, it's flooding. Lauren Mayo is one of five women on a fitness retreat trapped in her hotel. We're on the sixth floor, so the flooding is kind of amazing because the wind and rain are just bringing it through the sliding doors. Newlyweds Sarah and Scott Riggins locking themselves in the bathroom. We've got the wind going about 100 miles per hour. You can really hear it outside, shaking the doors. This image showing Barbuda right in the center of Irma's eye. The prime minister saying some 90% of the island's buildings are destroyed. Hurricane hunters inside Irma finding it's the first Atlantic Ocean storm ever to maintain winds of at least 180 miles an hour for this long. It's 10 a.m. here in Puerto Rico and Hurricane Irma appears to have arrived. We've got some very powerful winds, rain and surf. San Juan, a ghost town. The governor warning people not to go outside under any circumstances, saying the island has never seen a hurricane like this before. More than a thousand in shelters. We don't know what's going to happen. It's scary, right. and I pray for everyone that's out there that's not don't want to leave their homes. And Lindsay Janice joins us from San Juan, Puerto Rico tonight. Lindsay, we can see the effects right there behind you, and more than a half a million without power there already. Yes, David, the head of the power company says it could be between four and six months before power is restored to some of those areas. We are being told to expect sustained hurricane force winds for at least a couple of hours tonight. There's also major concern about storm surge and flash flooding. It's going to be a long night. David. All right, long night indeed. Lindsay Janice and our team there in San Juan stay safe tonight. And as we told you last night here in the broadcast, we were looking at two possible scenarios for Florida. Tonight, a much clearer picture here. The new models are now in and also North and South Carolina declaring states of emergency. So let's get right to Chief Meteorologist Ginger Z tonight. She's been tracking Irma with us all afternoon in the newsroom. And where is Irma right now? Irma is northeast of San Juan, Puerto Rico by about 50 miles. That center of the eye, which the eye is about 20 miles across, is moving west-northwest at 16. So San Juan, my primary concern for that part, and Puerto Rico, the northeast corner, flash flooding. But now as this moves on, with 185 mile per hour wind still, the pressure, David, is actually dropping. So we could still see strengthening yet tonight. That's what's so frightening. Looking at these hurricane warnings, the Turks and Caicos, the southern Bahamas now in them, even Freeport and Nassau into the hurricane watch. Turks and Caicos through the southern Bahamas could see up to 20-foot storm surge. These are islands that only have elevation of a couple of feet. The timing, Thursday into Friday. Friday into Saturday, it's just north of Cuba. Saturday into Sunday, it moves toward Florida. And Sunday afternoon, we have a Category 4 in this scenario sitting over Miami. Storm surge there, heavy rains, incredible power with winds, up to three. So it stays very strong in this. I want everyone to pay attention to the cone, though, because still looking at Georgia and South Carolina. Additionally, in that cone, in this also, uh, in this scenario, at least 75 mile per hour winds, so hurricane force winds, Lindsay was just talking about it, extend 50 miles on each side. So you're not 
safe, even if you're away from this, the computer models, as you said, coming together on that east side of Florida. Coming together. So two scenarios. We said west side or east side, and tonight mm -hmm. we believe it's east side. Here's the spaghetti here. We believe that it's east side, and that would also mean that for Savannah or Charleston, you could have impact early next week, and certainly inland flooding is still a major concern of mine, up through even Asheville. All right, Ginger Z with us again tonight. You'll be with us straight through the whole hurricane. Thank you.